This is part two of the Excel practice test, and we had finished part one just uh, completing the stocks page here, but we've got a number of other worksheets we have things to do on as well. Uh, let's go to the fun page, which stands for functions. And in cell G22, which is this cell right here, um, determine the sum of all of these numbers from F1 to H20. So let's go to our home tab and sum is the one you want to take from the auto sum button up here. And you may just have the uh, Greek letter sigma. And choose sum and uh, it's selected the wrong stuff so just click and drag over the stuff that you do want. You don't need to mess with getting the corners and, and uh, resizing uh, the dancing line, you can just click and drag. That's the easy way to do it. So it says F1 to H20, which is what I've got, and I want the sum, which is what I've got, and hit the enter key. And uh, now I want the smallest of those numbers. Well, that's the min function, so go up here and click on your down arrow and choose min. And again, uh, drag your mouse over the numbers you want, hit the enter key. Largest is going to be the max, so do max, and again, it's guessing the wrong stuff every time here. So drag your mouse over the stuff you want to find the max of. And then go down here to average and um, choose the average function and same range again. Hit enter. And that takes care of everything on the fun sheet. Uh, let's go to the DB tab. Uh, this has already been uh, formatted as a table for us. And uh, we're supposed to sort the data in decreasing order by the number of shares owned. Um, so here's the number of shares owned. And just click on the down arrow here. And sort in decreasing order, so largest to smallest. And now they're sorted from largest to smallest. And uh, you know what? That must not have been already formatted as a table for me. I'm going to... Um, there's there's uh, two ways to do this here. I'm gonna um, maybe it was. Why did it? Uh, let's try that again. I'm gonna select this, and I'm going to go to my table tools. Let's see, I'm not sure why it uh, kept this formatting here. Um, let's go and uh, format it this way. And well, apparently, you know, it's leaving. Uh, the stripes in. I don't think this will happen. Uh, happens normally. I may have done some previous formatting here. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to my home tab and I'm going to um, do no fill for all of those rows. Yes. And now it goes back to the default table stuff. Uh, so yeah, I had messed with the formatting of those earlier and uh, now it looks the way that it should look. So uh, this is the way it should look. Uh, you'll get the same results I did because you're uh, working off of the same spreadsheet that I am. Um, and there's no need to go back and, and uh, you know remove the row formatting. All you need to do is sort it. So as long as you've got this little arrow pointing down here and you verify these numbers are descending, uh, you'll be good. Okay, let's go to DB2 or database sheet number two. And um, I'm going to cheat here on this one. This is probably just a copy of the other worksheet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, this and choose no fill again. Now it doesn't look like anything changed, but I think when I do my um, filtering here, um, actually that probably won't happen either because filtering just collapses some of the data. But we'll see if we get the alternating uh, the colors on the rows or not. So create a filter that displays only those stocks that have a profit of 5,000 or more, and you must r use a rule. So here's my profit column, and so use a rule. You can't just go here and start clicking on, on numbers. So I want 5,000 or more, so go to number filters, and that would be greater than or equal to. Make sure you don't choose greater than, because you'll miss the ones that are 5,000. And then type in the value 5,000. Whoops, 5,000 don't need another rule we're just doing one rule here click on OK and those are our results and it did do the alternate colors for us OK uh, let's go to DB3 uh, we want to filter where the category is S or P so here's my category column and um, 
again, I'm going to do a little formatting here that you do not have to do. Um, tell it that I want no fill. And then go to my category column, and I want S or P. So click on the down arrow. And when you're doing text, um, you can just do, whoops, turn them all off. And then I want S or P to be turned on. And you can just do the checkbox when you're doing te testing for text equality. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you want to test for more than two things here, um, you have to do the checkbox because there are only two things you can do if you go and try to do a rule. I'll show you here. If I go to equals, I can only put in two things. Uh, if I want more than that, um, I'm out of luck um, unless I do it this way. So S or P, click on OK, and those are my S or P's. Okay, now let's go to um, the chart tab, and we want to take this sheet to create the chart described below. I want a 2D clustered bar chart, um, which is the same as a clustered column chart. The bars just go the other way. That shows the stock names, which is column A, and so select this. And um, the total purchase price, I made them red for it so you, they're easy to see, and the total current price, so I want to select these. And you're going to want these in the legend. Um, And it's going to be at the bottom of the chart, so you always, almost always include the titles when you do this. Otherwise, you're going to get Series 1 and Series 2 for the legend, and you don't want that. Um, so, put the chart on it. Well, first, let's create the chart, okay? So, let's go to Insert, and Column and Bar are almost exactly the same. The bars just go a different direction. So, this is what I get, and there's a red bar for the current price, and there is a blue bar for the original purchase price. And I want to put this on a new sheet using the Move Chart button, and then I want to set the title Top 6 Stocks. So let's move it. I don't care what you call the sheet. Chart 1 is just fine with me. And we want a title. Uh, labels are always on the Layout tab here. And for Chart Title, let's put it above the chart. And we don't need to select it. We can just start typing right away. And I want Top 6 Stocks, I think, is what it said to put for a title. And I'm going to go back to the chart page here. And it says add a legend at the bottom. Make the font size of the chart 20. And it looks like all of the other, that's supposed to be vertical axis, not axes. And uh, we want all of those to be 20, I'm sorry, 14 points and legend at the bottom and the chart title to 20. So let's select our title here. Notice if you click on the edge here you get the four-headed or the uh, solid line around the box and if you click inside you get the dashed line. We want the solid one so I'm going to click on the outside again and that will affect everything in the box and I want to make that 20 and I want to make this 14 I want to make this 14, and I don't think you can do a non-adjacent selection when you're doing this. I think I've tried that before, and it doesn't work. So you just have to do three separate commands here. And um, the other thing was to position this at the bottom, and that is on um, layout. And if we go to our legend, uh, it gives us a bunch of choices here. Let's just put it down at the bottom. And there it is. And let's go back to our chart here. And we have just done all of that stuff. And we can turn all of that black. And let's go. Now, uh, the following instructions apply to sheets Q1 through Q4. So uh, this is some formatting. So um, you can do this the hard way if you want to. Uh, but the easy way is to select all the sh um, sheets at once. So do a sh uh, shift click on the last one here. Or you can do control click on all four of them. And format B7 to H7 with a dollar sign and zero decimal places. So B7 to H7 with a dollar sign and uh, zero decimal places. Make all of the text in A3 to H3 bold. So A3 to H3 is going to be uh, bold. Write a line B3 to H3. Three, omit column A. Okay, so right align those so they're lined up over the numbers better. 
and in B7 to H7 add a top and double bottom border um, which you can do from the borders here and uh, let me see um, top and double is here uh, another easy way to get that also is that's the total style here although the total style may change the font for you a little bit now the neat thing about what I just did is that um, all four of my worksheets are formatted exactly the same way now okay so we've done all four of those notice there aren't any, aren't any other instructions on Q2 or Q3 or Q4 so let's go to the last sheet here which is summary and it says enter formulas in B4 to H4 which will compute the totals in each expense category for all four quarters I want to get the numbers from row seven so let's go here and it's a formula so start it with an equal sign and um, I want the totals from row seven so uh, I want supplies for quarter one so click on it and do a plus so it should say Q1 B7 with an exclamation mark in between and then click on the second one here so I'm working on the total for supplies and then do another plus and then go to Q3 and get the supplies total for that one and then do a plus and go to Q4 and get the supplies total for that one and do not go back and click on summary that'll mess up your formula we're done with the formula now so hit the enter key and then it will take you back and that is the sum of all of those numbers now when I copy it to column to the right here I want the B's to change to C's and then to D's and E's and F's and so on and so that means that um, if I just copy this over I used relative there's no dollar signs in here these are relative cell references so if I click on this and get my fill handle and drag it all the way across I should get the right number so let's look at advertising here and it's Q1 H7, Q2 H7, Q3 H7, Q4 H7 and um, if I double click on it and let's see if I can go back here and uh, it does not show the boxes if they're on another page for us but uh, this is 3,000 uh, 3,000 3,000 so I'm up to a little over 9,000 and another 3,000 would be uh, 12,000 and then some change here because I wasn't adding up the hundred so um, everything is working and that appears to be the end of the practice test um, I didn't put a goal seek question on here but there will be a goal seek question on the actual test so make sure you're familiar with that and that's the end of this video